Hi, I'm Leroy Jones, Distribution Supervisor for Placer County Water Agency. I wanted to give you a brief tour of this pump station and some historic landmarks. This is a 360 virtual tour, so you can look around by using your mouse or the touch screen, so feel free to look around anywhere you want, even where I'm not. This pump station is known as the American River Pump Station. It was built in 2008 at a cost of $75 million. It's located approximately nine miles north of Folsom Dam and Reservoir along the North Fork of the American River. While we're taking this tour, I would like you to consider just some of the forward thinking and stewardship here at PCWA. So let's look at one of the landmarks. If you look behind me a little bit, if you come this way and you look up, you can see a giant cut out of the hillside. Um, there's some bushes growing, but there's actually a keyway there. This keyway and this cut was for the Auburn Dam. Um, this dam was constructed in 1968. Construction was halted due to an earthquake in 1975. I would like to point out to the river, if you can look to my right in front of me, you'll see some boulders. They almost look cube, kind of. These boulders were placed there purposely. They serve two purposes. One, to help push water into the intake structure, into the screens. But the main factor was to create class two and class three wrappers for recreation. You have this precious resource of water, but you always want to give back. It was, um, you want to make sure it's a place where people want to visit and can enjoy. And uh, that was very important to PCWA. So I, I wanted to point that out. I am standing on the intake structure of the pump station. This is the inlet water to the pump station, the beginning water to the pump station. And all that you see here is part of the intake structure for the American River pump station. Now we're going to talk about the real specialty of this uh, intake structure, and that are, that's the screens, the actual intake where the water falls through. So let's go down here and take a look at the screens. Here are the screens for the intake structure. I don't know if you guys can see these out here. Um, they're they're uh, metal screens, they're stainless steel screens. And you know, screens have slots in them. These actually have little tiny slots with little um, cups that are positioned in a special way to catch all the water. And I can actually flow through these screens six million gallons an hour. I can push 100,000 gallons of water through the screens every minute. That's a lot of water. What's special about these screens is that they're environmentally safe. The district was uh, very important that they didn't harm the environment. So these screens, although they're cut, all that water is coming in, it won't suck in a fish or a crawdad or harm a rafter coming down. They're unnoticeable. The river keeps flowing right over it. There's 12 intakes on these screens. Intakes is just a pipe and it just carries the water and the water has to flow down into the gate, right? The river's here, so you have to create something lower so that water can flow down. And then it flows down to the actual gate that we open up to let the water into the pump station. And after those gates, which sit right up in here, it flows into a knife gate vault where the water is uh, collected, allowed to fill up and overflow a, over a wall so we can catch even more debris and let it settle down. So just, so just wanted to make a clear understanding. Now we know how the water comes into the pump station. This is the beginning water flow to the pump station, down through the screens, down through the pipes, into the gate, into the knife gate vault, and then into the pump station. Let's go look at this knife gate vault. Hi, here we are at the entrance to the knife gate vault, and it's basically just a hatch, just a little hole in the ground. We are about halfway in between the intake structure and the pump station. We're going to drop down about 20 feet, so let's go down here and take a look. We are now standing inside the knife gate vault. A little bit ago we were up top, we are looking at the hatch, and now we're inside. If you look to the front of me, you'll see a series of gate controls. These are actually the controls for the ninth gate at the river. 
These gates probably go down another 150 feet. So you're looking at the backside and underneath of the river. The water flows through the gates into this sump area, this pool area, and it's allowed to build up and flow over a wall. So this way we're able to trap a little bit more of fines and any sediment that might still get in here into the water. If you look to my right, you'll see some hydraulic lines. These are actually the lines that I use remotely to open up gates or to shut gates. Um, also on this side here, if you look to my left, this is actually air supply. This is uh, air diffusers for each screen. And I can blow air up through the screens actually to uh, remove some of the debris. So that's what this is. It allows the air supply from the pump station to uh, blow out the screens all the way at the river. So I just want to touch base on this area. It's a, it's a very unique little area, a little spot, and I wanted you to take a look at it. So now let's go look at the pump station. Hi, here we are finally at the American River Pump Station. If you look straight up above me, you'll see this yellow beam. And it's a pretty big beam, and you'll notice that it says 15. It's actually 15 ton. And this is our uh, crane, this is our bridge crane for uh, removing components off the pump system. This is a massive crane, but it's not big enough to pull out an entire pump. We have to still disconnect the motors from the pumps and the manifold and pull it out sectionally. That's how big these pumps are. If you can follow me this way a little bit, I'd like to talk to you a little about the motor and some of the controls on the backwash. Hi, here we are at the motors. I want you to take a look at the motors that are down. These guys are 1,500 horsepower motors. Um, they do have an upper and lower bearing that we do use oil for, but they're also cooled by water. Um, this is a water jacket around here, and there's actually these two-inch pipes. They carry the water in the motor around, and then they dump it back in, and it's picked up again. It's never wasted. It's just kept cooled and circulated around the pump to keep the motors cool. These pumps run at 1,700 RPMs, they can move as much as 18,000 gallons a minute, okay? So they move massive, massive amounts of water. Um, this station overall, in 24 hours, I can produce 122 million gallons of water. If you look right behind me or to my left here, this is some of the controls on that backwash that we talked about and some of the knife gate openings. One of the things that have to happen is the gate must shut and then the air comes through and blows off the screens. We were down in the vault earlier. You saw the conveyance that carried the air to the gates. This is some of the controls that make it happen. Um, if you come with me, let's go down, start to work our way down to the lower deck of the pump station. Okay, so here we are, and I want to talk about a little bit of the components on the manifold. So we have massive pumps, 1,500 horsepower. There are six pumps. If you look down the line, there are six pumps. Some are a little newer, some are a little older. Um, the manifolds are kind of all common and the same. One of the important features is this MOV. This is a motor operated valve. And the importance of this feature on any pipe, any water that's moving is that you have to make sure that the water is flowing smoothly. One thing about water, you just can't shut it off. Once water is in motion, you must divert it before you can shut it down. Okay, so if you don't do that, you will cause a hammer and you can increase the pressure by six times the amount. So I run 60 pounds through this pipeline. If I'm pushing this water up the hill and I just shut this pump off right now, I'm going to create a wave. It's going to come back, it's going to hit this manifold at 360 PSI and cause major damage. So what we do, this valve stays shut. The motor is started, the flow is coming up to this valve. It slowly opens, very, very slowly, and starts to slowly fill the pipeline until everything is open and the pipeline is full and now the water is moving slowly. The same thing on shutoff. This valve must shut very, 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 very slow, and then the pump must shut down. I wanted to put that out there because this exists in every walk of life where you move water through a pipeline, whether you have two pounds of pressure or you have 100 pounds of pressure. If you shut water that is flowing off 
too quickly or you start it too quickly, you damage pipes. If you follow me on down a little bit, this is some of the analyzers here. This is just giving me actually temperature of the river. This is actually, a, 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 these are water quality kind of showing me the pH and that's just alkaline or the acidity of the river. And this right here, it's, it's, it's turbidity. It's telling me how many dirt particles are in the water. So if you want to follow me down to the lower deck, we'll take a look down here and we'll actually talk more about the pump side of, uh, of, of, of the station. Hello, now we are down in the lower deck of the pump station. And um, this area here has uh, many features. One of them I want to talk about is this tank right here and this pump right here. So we talked about the knife gate opening and they open on hydraulic pressure. I need that pressure from the manifold. So if I have no manifold pressure, if a pump isn't running, I cannot open those gates remotely. So I create the hydraulic. We actually have a sump pump down in this concrete here that goes all the way down into that knife gate vault like where we showed you. And I take that water and I can turn on the pump using this panel here and I can bring the water out of the sump and bring it around, I can fill this tank. I can turn on this pump and I can build pressure to manually open the knife gate vaults um, on hydraulic, okay? Um, if you look directly in front of me, you see this big air tank. This is the air supply for the backwash system for the screens that we've talked about all the way up to here. This is where the air originates from um, so I just wanted to let you guys see that, and this is how the air is developed and it gets down to the screens, and here's our backup uh, gate opening in case something goes wrong. Everything down here is redundant. We're going to go over here and take a look at more of the gates and some of the pumps. So we looked at all the uh, backwash and some of the air, and I talked about some redundancy. Here's another set. So. Even though I may have a hydraulic supply, that line may be killed or broken where I cannot engage that pressure to open up those knife gates down below where we saw in the knife gate vault. But if I can still build pressure, but I don't have a mechanism to put that pressure in, I can simply bypass these and then I can use that pressure to hand crank those gates open. So that's three ways. There's another way. If everything fails and I have nothing at all, no electricity, no water, no anything, and I need those gates open or closed, I would have to go down in that knife gate vault. I would go over to the wall that we looked at on the back side of the river, and I would hand crank those guys open or close. It would take me a bit, but that's, that's our, our last redundancy. So I just wanted to explain that. Um, the upper deck, we saw the motors. Down here, you're going to see the pumps the pump side. So to every pump there's a motor and then the actual pump. Now if we can look at the pumps here a little bit more. Um, these are your actually pumps. This is uh, your water supply for your seal water. Very, very important. A pump like this, the seal needs to be kept cool, about two gallons a minute. Um, it's a mechanical seal that's cooled by water. A seal, all it does is it keeps the water down in the pump so the motor can spin the shaft without the water coming up. So the, the mechanical seal keeps all the fluid in the pump base. And it's a very important part. If you lose that, you really can't run your pump. And it, like I said, they spin at 1,700 RPMs. So you have to have water constantly around that seal to keep it cool and everything to work right. These little components, they're not the big wows, but they're some of the most important features of your pumps. And uh, there you have it, this American River Pump Station. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you for joining me for the virtual tour of the American River Pump Station. Remember, clean water is a precious resource, so be water wise. If you would like to learn more, please follow us on social media or visit us at pcwa.net.